So we are all pilgrims on the path leading to that which is our real being and existence. That is our real being and existence. So the path is not outside us. It is only to turn our minds within. There are fortunately for us a few who have reached the goal. There are fortunately for us a few who have reached the goal, who have realized their true being and existence and can, can tell us what to do and what not to do to reach that goal. I had the good fortune of serving my master Swami Ramdas, who had reached such a height and could say boldly, Ramdas and God are not different. That means to say, I am God. My beloved mother, Vishwamata Krishna Bhai also could say, I am the entire universe and I transcend everything. This was the experience of both of them. And they have shown us the way to reach the goal so that we may also get the same experience. It is very simple. Take to the chanting of God's name constantly. The chanting of the name will gradually purify our mind. Enable us to see the truth face to face. What is that which is obstructing us from seeing? It is our ego. No, there is no ego really. It is only the ego sense. It is our ego. There is no ego really. So our effort is to get rid of that ego sense. By chanting Ramana or any, any name of God, we will be able to get rid of the ego sense. Once the ego sense is gone, we can also declare, I am Brahman, I am Brahmasma. All of us are anxious to reach the goal, but at the same time we are afraid to give up the ego. We are holding on to it, holding on to the ego, because we feel if we give up our individuality, we will be losing everything. In fact, the saints have been assuring us that we are not going to lose anything. Instead, we are going to gain everything. On the occasion of Guru Purnima, Puja Swamiji shared with us these thoughts. Today is Guru Purnima, the most auspicious day when all spiritual aspirants rededicate their lives to their Guru. Guru may be in different forms, but the Guru is really one. This should not be forgotten. There is only one Guru and that is God. He has come in many forms to teach earnest aspirants. Our beloved Purushottam Papa gave us the holy and dark of Guru Mantra and we are chanting the mantra with the aspiration to realize our oneness with him. Many have taken the mantra from him, become his devotees. We cannot say how many have the real aspiration to realize their oneness with him, or how many have been aspiring only for worldly attainments. Whatever we aspire for, he is sure to give us, but foolishly we aspire for worldly things. Worldly things do not give us real peace and happiness. Only attainment of God can give us peace and happiness. So it will be in our interest to aspire only for God realization and nothing less than that. We have been we have all been chanting the holy Ramana for the past many years. But most of us still complain that our progress is not satisfactory. One thing should not be forgotten, and that is mere chanting of Ramana is not sufficient. Chanting of Ramnam should be supported by a strict moral life. That means we should be pure in thought, word and deed. We should not harbor any ill will towards others. We must love everybody. We must serve everybody. We must not cherish desires as the desires will pull us down. It is said by Mahatmas that man has many bad qualities which has to be overcome before he can become pure and progress on the spiritual path. So to get rid of the bad qualities is our initial struggle 
and they are overcome gradually, provided we are intense in our aspiration and chanting the all powerful Ramana. Freedom from bad habits is not achieved by fighting against those forces, but by developing good qualities. And Swami is listing various values. Values are expression of God. God Himself. That is why when we see a good thing happening, we observe a good thing happening through a particular individual, we feel happy, is it not? One lottery ticket vendor, no? a girl, She was instrumental in passing on a ticket to somebody who got six crores. Out of his love, he came and gave her one lakh. She immediately returned and said, 51 lakhs have already come to me because of the commission. And uh, the other man insisted, okay, that is all right. But because I, I, you have been instrumental, you know, I did not do anything to get the six crores. When pressed, you know, she passed it on to the chief minister's distress during COVID period, last year. When we hear this, you know, what wells up in our mind? Contentment. You know? So when we hear anything, any episode depicting the contentment, we feel happy, is it not? We can't say we feel happy. There is a present feeling welling up in our heart. What is that? When Swamiji says that morals, you know, so uh, along with chanting, we bring in as many positive incidents into our mind. So initially we have reverence for that individual, agreed. But later on we find, why did I feel that? You know, I have nothing to do with that person. We have a big uh, story bank, you know, what do you call it? Not story, in anecdotes bank, where contemporary incidents the touch and movers are stored. We, when, once in a way we keep on going through it. And many of you who have been reading Vision will find there is a column for children, near children. When we go through that, something wells up in our heart. We are looking at ourselves. What is that? Here he says, you know, freedom from bad habits is not achieved by fighting against those forces, but by developing good qualities. So first of all, the good qualities are there in us. The, the, the living force is already in us. As listed in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, the devic and asuric forces both are in us. So the devic forces are lying latent, dormant in us. It has to be touched, kindled and uh, vitalized. So what is the input? He makes us to see and observe such good things that are happening in and around us. One father hmm, was travelling in a bus without his uh, usual, what do you call that? Apparel, coat. Like ordinary person he was dressed. Somebody was sitting near him and uh, casually, you know, he looked very dull. So we asked him, yeah, what is that? He said, I am going for dialysis. But a stage may, came, uh, may come when uh, uh, dialysis may not work. 
ultimately I have to look for a kidney transplantation, which I cannot afford. And there should be a donor also. Immediately, you know, the fathers intuitively heard the voice. You are, practicing. you are preaching, you know, why don't you practice? He immediately told the person, I will also come to the hospital. Then he went to the hospital and told them that I will donate my kidney. And the kidney was given. When you go through the day, it has all come in the paper. The other day we shared, you know, somebody, uh, Rinku, his name is Rinku, a couple of months back. He was a student in Karnataka Engineering College. He had to abruptly stop his study because of financial constraints. So he came from Bangalore. Mother is in Aruba, somewhere, South Kerala. She was a heart patient. So he thought he would be near her. And somehow he was able to get a job, you know, a security, security person in a hospital. Six hundred rupees are something like that. One day we went, while he was on duty, he saw a scooter parked in a wrong place. It should not have been. So he saw a young lady coming back from the scooter. Naturally, he there's a dialogue. Suddenly, this lady gave him a slap. He did not react. Went back. But somebody, God, see how God set every stage. Somebody had videoed the whole thing, and you know what is it called? It goes viral in social media. Many of his contacts were able to see a person sitting in Dubai, he saw it immediately, he was touched, moved. He immediately responded, I will give a job in Dubai for him and send a air ticket. So the boy was contacted and the boy said, I cannot go now. My mother is a heart patient, I have somehow arranged for the surgery, which I cannot afford now. That was also spread that news. Immediately so many people poured the money and the surgery was done and in October, this is November, no, last month, he had gone to Dubai and joined the... So when we hear such things, what happens to us? We don't know him, we have not seen him, we don't know his... We, don't, we have not seen him in his photo, no, not image, but still something in us, you know. The non-violent behavior of his has touched and kindled so many hearts who came to his rescue without his asking anybody. So God in his own mysterious ways arranges and this. Suppose we start collecting such incidents in our life along with our chanting. We are chanting the name of one who is every, who is all, who is everywhere, who is everything. To know him, we need a proper mindset. And the proper mindset is according to what Puja Swamiji says, you know, purity. And purity can be achieved only by driving out impurity in us. And the best way to drive away the impurity is to fill in with positive ideas, positive incidents. Not philosophy as such. Philosophy, we may hear at that time, we may appreciate intellectually, we will forget. But an incident, you know, that will touch and kindle. So these are some of the ways, you know, freedom from bad habits. The first thing stands in the way is the lack of faith. Sometimes we lose faith in God. Sometimes we lose, lose faith in our Guru. This should not happen. We must develop implicit and firm faith in the Guru or God. 
then only our progress will be assured. Envy hinders the progress of his other. When others get something that we do not have, we feel jealous. Instead, we should be happy that our brother or our friend has been blessed with something good. Such an attitude on our part will purify our mind. These are our philosophies. You know? But in, instead of that, suppose we get some anecdotes. This we will forget. But anecdotes, you know, leave an indelible impression in our mind. So Swamiji gives us clues. Yes. Now we remember Vinobhaji telling in one of his writings. When there is a when the water is dirty in a in a pot, in a in a container, which is stationary, which cannot be taken out and emptied, how can you purify the water? He says you pour pure water. You keep on pouring pure water. And because of the theory of displacement, it overflows. In that the the dirty water also goes. And gradually, by perseveringly, when we uh, keep on pouring pure water, one day it will become wholly pure. So similarly, we keep on feeling during our non-chanting time. Even during our chanting time, we should, we, we should try to keep on reminding us that we are chanting the name of one who is making me to chant, who is making me to think who is making me to see, who is making me to taste, touch, smell. We should keep ourselves intellectually okay. Sir. And during the non-chanting time, try to fill our mind with as many positive episodes God places before us. Either we are observing or He will somehow. One thing can be assured that we need not go in search of it. Mysteriously, he will connect us with such positive incidents. He will make us to observe or read or know. So by filling our mind during the non-chanting time with the positive incidents, to a very great extent, probably we will be able to put ourselves on the process of purification. So he says, anger, envy, gossiping telling lies, body resorts to harming others, injuring others. The sadhaka should be absolutely free from such habits. To covet any other other's property and take away something without his knowledge is stealing and this is very bad from both the worldly and spiritual points of view. Sadhaka should completely refrain from such habits. Even mentally wishing to possess somebody's property amounts to stealing. We, especially sadhakas and all those who want to lead a happy and peaceful life, must be very careful in our interaction with the opposite sex. We should never into, uh, enter into immortal, immoral uh, relationship. It is important that an air of watchful intelligence is exercised in our interaction with the opposite sex. Failing to do so will lead to disaster. So before we can expect spiritual progress, we should watch ourselves and see if we are leading a moral life, free from all bad habits, and if we are developing good qualities in us. Without developing good qualities and getting rid of bad ones, we cannot expect to go forward towards God. Our mind must be purged of all impurities, all dirt and all the thought waves, then only the mind can become still and experience God. If we are doing anything, if we are thinking or talking of anything that is not considered right for our spiritual progress, we must be able to do Sorry. If we are doing anything, if we are thinking or talking of anything that is not considered right for our spiritual progress, we must be able to drop that immediately so that instead of going down, we may go up the spiritual ladder. Every sadhaka has to be vigilant and work only for spiritual progress and never by his actions, thoughts or words come down spiritually. For all these things, intensify your dhamma. Think of God more and more. Love everybody, try to serve all, aspire to realize God. In this birth itself, to realize God means to realize His presence within you. 
realize your oneness with Him, who is all pervading, infinite, eternal, who has manifested as the entire universe, that will give us absolute peace, absolute bliss. So, some practical tools which Swamiji is giving us. Outwardly, we are chanting, no doubt. And on some occasions, we derive some inexplicable joy also. But when the chanting is done, uh, over, we have to watch what is happening to us. So here, Papa's, you know, half-quoted words come. Chanting is for remembrance. Chanting is for remembrance. Chanting is for remembrance. Remembrance of God. So why is it that I am not able to remember it? Then it could be that certain certain ways of thinking, certain habits, they do not help me in achieving this goal. So today Puja Swamiji is reminding us that we should be very vigilant. Constant evaluation is necessary. You know? Where are we? Have we been able to expand our love circle? Have we been able to reconcile with those whom we differ? Not for any benefit, not for any positive result, just for the sake of it, because he is also a form of the same power which is making you to feel that you are. So reconciliation based upon that. Are we in a position to develop quality care and concern for others? As much as possible. 100% may not be possible. 5%, 10%, 15%. And then filling our mind with positive thoughts. When you say self-evaluation, one anecdote comes to us. We have shared many a times, but for the sake of people who have, who have not heard this. One day, a boy of 10 or 15 years old, 10 years old, not 15 years, 10 or 20 years old, correct. He, he was looking, suddenly he saw a medical shop. There was a phone, unlike today, you know, there was only landline. He was unable to reach the stand where the phone is kept. So they have provided some stool, you know, some, some, for, some furniture or something for the customer to sit. He took that, stood up, took the phone and started dying. The owner or the manager of the shop was taking some milk from the shelf. He was just looking at the boy. He did not immediately shout. He waited patiently what the boy says. So the boy heard the other, uh, the, from the other side, you know, when the person talked, he could hear the shop owner or manager. So the boy said, is it, I'm talking to so-and-so? Yes. I know that you have got a lawn, a garden in your, in your Bangalore. I can come and do the ma maintenance of your lawn. So the voice came, we have already got one, so we don't need anybody. No, no, I can do it for a cheaper price, cheaper cost. Then they said, no, we are satisfied with him. No, I will be able to do better. Why don't you give me a chance? Did we now tell you that we are satisfied with that person? So don't keep on asking us this. Then they put the telephone down. The boy, the, the shop owner was thinking that the boy would get uh, you know, discouraged or dispirited. <laughs> On the contrary, the boy was supremely happy. So seeing the boy, you know, he said, you want a job? No, no, I don't need a job. But you are asking, you know, requesting them. I just wanted to check up whether they are satisfied with my work. I am the one who is working here. <laughs> God is teaching us what is evaluation. Huh? How are we to evaluate? 
in a simple form, in a simple anecdote, he is, he is making us aware of this. These are some of the ways we can check whether we are, we are not to sit in, in judgment of our own, no? I have done good work. I must be appreciated. Not like that. My mind may be telling that I am doing good. But I should check up whether my service or my attitude or my way of handling or functioning is up to their satisfaction or expectation. So he is teaching us through this, you know, when we read this many, many years ago, immediately, you know, uh, we were inspired, we have put it in our bank. Self-appraisal. When we started reading, the Papa keeps on telling that we should evaluate. Periodic, periodic evaluation is a must for a spiritual aspirant. So we have to check up whether whatever we are doing is right, whether whatever we are doing is helping us to move towards the goal which God has enabled us to conceive. So like that, you know, positive incident, there are plenty. When we fill our mind with such a positive incidents, we have to watch what is happening in us. After many years, we are totally recollecting. That means it gets stored in our memory. No? When such stories keep on coming to you, don't you think that uh, it will help us in purifying our mind? Wherever there is selflessness, wherever there is broad and broad vision, wherever there is generosity, wherever there is magnanimity, you know, automatically our something wells up in our heart which we cannot explain what exactly it is. And that is God. Tomorrow we will share, uh, one day we received a uh, video clip showing such things, you know, and say, this is God, this is God, this is God. So the, this, this should go along with, along with Ramana. Otherwise what happens is, the risk is, we, we, we appreciate that individual, we appreciate that situation, we appreciate uh, everything that is external. We don't see the finger of God. Now we are trying to see that God has made me to become aware of this incident which had happened somewhere, somewhere in the world. No? It need not necessarily be in Kerala or India, it can be anywhere in the world. And then he, he makes us to get connected with it and telling me indirectly, Oh, I am that. Papa in one of his writings, he says, It is necessary to make it clear how Ramdas received orders from Ram. It was not any verbal order from him. God is not an entity, so, you know, verbal order can come. How does it come then? Every impulse that arose in him was coming from Ram. So when we say the uh, in inexplicable joy welling up in our heart, where there is zero vested interest, because we are not connected in any way with that incident. We are not connected in any way, in any way with that person. We are not connected in any way with the result. But still, when you hear this, what, what wells up? So there is zero vested interest, zero self-interest. That means God. And somebody asked Papa, how do we know that uh, uh, whenever we get any, any, any prompting, how do we know whether it is coming from him or from my own mind? That the yardstick is, first thing is it will be spontaneous. And second thing is it will be free from any vested interest, any self-interest. It should be spontaneous and free from vested interest. If that is there, it is coming directly from him or he is that. So these are some of the ways 
He is prompting us to dwell on, to purify our heart. Rid ourselves of all the ducts that are still there. Over the, over the period, over, over many uh, births, probably we would have unknowingly or knowingly collected such vasanas. And now he is reminding us through it, sayings, through shastras, that this will, this will not help us in our spiritual journey. So it is time you make a resolve that you try to get rid of it. And the way is to remember him by chanting and also to fill our mind with positive thoughts, ennobling thoughts. You know? Where, they, they, where, where you find, you know, you will not be able to explain what exactly it is, but it's a present feeling. Ah, yes. So, Papa says, that is called objectless happiness. Normally, our happiness is centered on objects, individual, situation. When it is in line with our desire, we are happy. But here, there, it is objectless happiness. That means there is no conditioning at all, but at the same time the bliss, bliss or fullness is felt. So putting all these together, we get some clothes. So along with Ram now, what are we to do now? So here Swamiji says, we should be able to lead a moral life. We, are, we have been chanting the Holy Ramana for the past many years, more, but most of us still complain that our progress is not satisfactory. One thing should not be forgotten, that is mere chanting of Ramana is not sufficient. Chanting of Ramana should be supported by a strict moral life. That means we should be pure in thought, word and deed. So today's uh, uh, message Swamiji gives us is this. Let us all ponder about it, ponder over it deeply and then pray to him from the bottom of the heart to uh, somehow uh, remove all those debts which prevent me from knowing and enable me to scale the heights. Hello. Om Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Om Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Yeah. 